unstoppable. You know the enemy don't like that thing. You know the enemy don't like that thing. The whole idea is to try to stop Israel from prospering. They don't want us to return back to our Father. They don't want us to return back to the Most High. So um, these are the uh, these are the attempts of the enemy to try to stop us. But it's not going to stop us because it's recorded in the Bible that we're going to get the kingdom if we continue in this faith, if we continue in this truth and this walk. Continue to be disciplined. Continue to uh, stay steadfast and keeping the commandments in the face of adversity, in the face of trials and temptations in the face of tyranny in the face of persecution that's what the deacon is bringing out shout out to the bishops bishop nathaniel bishop kanai shout out to the deacons the captains the officers the soldiers the young men women and children and to the visitors our brothers and sisters that are online i truly thank god for having mercy on you for the for that you can be a part of this of this heritage being given back to you because we are truly the people of the Lord and you have no idea how hard the enemies work so that you will never find this particular day. So don't take, like the deacon said, do not take this for granted. Do not take this for granted. There was, a, there was billions and billions of dollars spent to prevent you from making it here and they wasted their money. <laughs> okay, because the, they're pissed off now that you made it. <laughs> Y'all all right? Let's read that thing, man. Yes, Let's sir. Let's get this thing going. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning. This is what the Lord said. The Lord said he declared the ending from the beginning. You, you know, there's so much connected in that verse. If God, if God declared the end from the beginning, that means everybody's just following a course. If the Lord said that the Israelites are my people, that's who the Israelites are. That means you can't change them. Give me uh, um, Malachi 3 and 6. We're coming back to this here. Malachi 3 and 6 before we just get right into the lesson. I'm going to tell you right now, this lesson is long. When I say long, meaning that we're gonna, it's going to be several parts, and I'll, and I'll tell you that uh, this particular class is actually a part two to what I had did two weeks ago about the, uh, the nemesis of Israel. Okay, and this is basically part two, and this is called the arch enemy doctrine of Christianity. That's what the name of this one is, but it's still describing some of the uh, information that was in part one. So this is part two now, and we're just carrying on, and then Lord willing, there'll be part three, and you know, hopefully I can get through this thing in, in a few parts, but I really believe that this uh, lesson is a lesson that our people need. Need. Uh, read, read. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. The Lord said, I change not. Why, why is it that he said he changed not? Because of what we just read in Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. And we're coming back to, I know there was more in there. We're coming back to that, um, to that Malachi. Malachi. Yes, sir. Bishop. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Read. Declaring the end from the beginning. God declared the ending from the beginning, meaning that it's already been charted out how the Lord is going to deal on this planet. Go ahead. And from ancient times. And from the ancient of days, the black God with the woolly hair. You know the enemy don't like that. And from the ancient of days, from the ancient times, because he was back there in the ancient. Read that again. And, and from the what? And from ancient times. And from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. From ancient times, he declared things that are not even in our present yet. Let's, let's hold, hold. Just ponder on that. From the, before he said, let there be light, he had declared things that has not even happened yet. <laughs> Can you dig it? Yes, sir. Things that have not even happened yet, he declared all of that from before he said, let there be light. Go ahead. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. And from ancient times, the Lord declared the things that are not yet done, even to this moment. He declared the things that are not yet done. Let's, let's, let's jump the gun. Let's jump the gun. Give me Romans 9, because you got to stab Christianity quick. Romans 9, Romans 9, 22. Romans chapter 9 and verse 22. This is one of the things that was declared from the beginning 
and has not yet been done, even up to now has not been done. Read. What if God, willing to show his wrath. What if God, willing to show his wrath. Go ahead. And to make his power known. And God says, I want to make my power known. Endured with much long suffering. God endured with much long suffering. Go ahead. The vessels of wrath. What did God cause Esau? He's caused him the vessels of wrath. That's what it's talking about. Esau, read. The Fit. vessels of wrath, what? Fitted to destruction. He was made to be destroyed. He was a tailor-made suit that was made to be destroyed. Tailored to be destroyed. That's his whole purpose. So black folks trying to bring him into your church and all of that, you're going to get bit. You're going to get bit trying to reform the snake. God, already, God told you not to do that. Uh, so now, go back. No, no, no. There's more. There's more. Read. Verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. And also from the, from the beginning, from ancient times, he declared that he would make known the riches of his glory. Go ahead. On the vessels of mercy. So God has two vessels that he's going to operate through. He's going to operate through the vessels of wrath. That's how he's going to channel his anger through. He's going to show how powerful he is by destroying Esau. He's going to show how powerful he is because he built Esau up with all kinds of power and, and weapons and badness and, and a terrible attitude, pride, all of that. He built him up. And the Lord said, I built you up the same way I did King Pharaoh so that when I show my power in thee, when I destroy you, everybody's going to know that I was the power. That's the whole purpose of why Esau is here. Read that statement again. Yes, sir. The, the 22 again. Verse 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known. And God wants to make his power known. When did he declare this? From ancient times. Go ahead. Endured with much long suffering. He endured with much long suffering. The vessels of wrath. What did God say that he suffered with? The, the, go ahead. The vessels of wrath. God calls them the vessels of his wrath. The, the vessel is something that you channel something through. God is going to channel his power through him, through the, by destroying him. We're going to see how powerful God is when we, when we witness the vessel of God's wrath, which is Esau. That's how, that's how we're going to know how powerful God is when he destroys Esau. When did he declare this? From ancient times. I change not. That prophecy is still in effect. Read. The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. He, he, no, he was fitted to be a Christian. Fitted to destruction. No, he was fitted to be a, an urban, a, uh, urban apologist. Fitted to <laughs> destruction. He was fitted to be in a, uh, he was fitted to be a Baptist, a Christian, a preacher. What 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 the Bible say? The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Meaning that so how in the world could you make him something else? That's not hate talking. That's truth. The vessels of wrath made to be destroyed. Read. And that he might make known the riches of his glory. And God may, so, he may also make known the riches of his glory. So he's going to channel his riches and his glory through who? On the, on the vessels of mercy. The vessels of mercy is Jacob. That's what this chapter is talking about. This chapter is talking about Esau and Jacob. Esau is the vessel of God's wrath and Jacob is the vessel of God's mercy. So he's going to show his wrath in one instance, and right after he shows his wrath, he's going to instantly show his mercy. Give me Revelation, Revelation uh, 12 and 9. Let me show you how this, how this wrath is going to go down. Revelation. I, ain't, I ain't even started my scriptures yet. Go ahead. Revelation 12 and 9. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Here's another point of what we're reading here in the Bible. All of this, and don't let me forget, because I'm going back to um, Isaiah, and Malachi. Isaiah and and Malachi. Don't let me forget those two. Yes, Read sir. that. What, what are we talking about? We're talking about the uh, vessels of wrath, which is Esau, and the vessels of God's mercy, which is Jacob. Read in the New Testament. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. That's the vessels of God's wrath. That's the reason why he's red. It's talking about him. Read that again. And the great dragon. And was the great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. That's what this chapter in Revelation, the 12th chapter, goes into. 
Read. Was cast out. He was cast out of his rulership. He was, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? That's, what that, that's how that goes. Christianity is so doggone evil, you got the people thinking that this happened in the beginning. This hasn't even happened yet. Esau is still in his heaven. Esau is still in his heaven. He's about to lose it, but he's in his heaven now. Right. They've, they, Christianity has, has put burlap over your brain <laughs> where you can't think. Sitting up there talking about some, oh, this happened in the beginning, and, 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 and God and the angels kicked Satan out of heaven. <laughs> You've been kicked out of common sense. That's what happened. Read. That old serpent called the devil. That old Satan, that old satanic spirit that was in the garden with Eve. Go ahead. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. How do we know who this Satan is? Let's, let, me show you how, let me show you that this is him. What Bible can you read that shows a description of Jesus looking like that image that they made you all believe? None of them. I mean, I'm talking about, I ain't talking about the pictures now. I'm talking about in the text, in the writing. There is no Bible written, regardless of what translation you come up with, that describes a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus. But yet, when your kids see it, that's Jesus. <laughs> Where did that witchcraft come from? When you showed it to your wife before she got, before she repented, not my Jesus. Huh? Don't mess around and step on it. We used to do that. And Cam, step on it, step on the picture, and Lord have mercy. Sorry, Ephraim, but Ephraim would go crazy. <laughs> crying in the street. I have to put him in restraints. <laughs> he losing it, face all wet. <laughs> <laughs> Read. Yes, sir. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He deceived everybody. There's, understand, everybody, when you hold that, hey, 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 find me the picture of Caesar. Put it up there. Give me, give me, give me Caesar, the right Caesar now. Give me the, the one, the one that got the magical powers on it. The one that instantly convert burlap on your brain. Now, I know you might have to look for that. Though. that that's, that's, that's not a good one. That's, that's one of them, but I need the one. I need the one. Michelangelo one. Come on, just, just Google it. He'll pop up. He's famous enough. <laughs> Infamous, I should say. <laughs> Y'all all right? Yes, sir. We're struggling with it. What, 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 what? He done sent, Caesar done sent some powers where our system's not working right? Okay. There it is. That second one right there. See, you got, y'all got to know which one it is. You, 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 you didn't feel the power coming off the screen when it came up? You should have known that's what it was. That one right there. <laughs> Zoom in. Look at this thing. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Don't, now, I know we can't keep it up there too long because things going to start to happen. Y'all all right? Sir. But the deal is, this is not in the Bible as Jesus at all, in none of the Bibles. Let's read Jesus. Give me Revelation 1 and 1. Now, don't let me forget my, my now I'm coming back to everything that I started. I just want to drop these things to show you that Christianity is in the arch enemy's doctrine. The so-called Christianity. It got nothing to do with the Bible, as we're proven. Because they definitely gave you that Charles Manson. Y'all know who Charles Manson is, right? Can we get a picture of Charles Manson? Because I keep saying Charles Manson. And I know there's a generational gap that our enemies want to make sure that it stays in the gap. They don't want, us, they don't want the generations to have that connection. So let's find Charles Manson. Let's, let us introduce you into the brother of Cesar Bogier. <laughs> huh? give, 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 me, give, me, give me the, yeah, yeah, give me that second. Hey, 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 hey. it's in the same place where Caesar was. That's the spirit. Hey, 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 hey come on, man. <laughs> no, come on, brothers. What are y'all doing? Y'all don't know him? There you go. Huh? Zoom in. <laughs> Get rid of the woman. Get her off. Get, I want Caesar. There he is. Show that thing. There he is. Charles Manson. That's, this, right, this guy is a mass murderer. And, and believe it or not, his, his real life is similar to Cesar Bogier. Y'all thought he was a saintly holy man, didn't you? Huh? Cesar Bogier was committing incest with his sister Lucrezia. 
a murderer, an incest committer, a homosexual, all that. And they say, you model for the new Jesus Christ. They said, but there's a man that's like Charles Manson that's going to be many hundreds of, that's going to be a few years from where I am. I don't know if I should do that. Said, don't worry about it. Just pose. And boom, there he is. Put him back up there again. <laughs> All right. Now give me, give me the other one. <laughs> give, me, give me Caesar. Guys are like cousins. The hell is this? <laughs> put, 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 put Caesar back up there. There you go. There they go. That's the family. This, the Bogier family. Huh? <laughs> the Bogier family. Charles Manson. I know they mad right now. Damn. I said, hey, you just strike him dead up there. So y'all see that, right? Let's read that Bible. And we're going back to Revelation. Yes, sir. Revela Revelations chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What is this Bible talking about? The revealing of Jesus. The, re the revealing of Jesus. Read. Which God gave unto him. Which the Most High gave unto John, who was all on the Isle of the Patmos. Go ahead. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. To do what? To show. To uh show. To show with images. To show. Go ahead. Unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Read. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So the Most High sent these images to John for him to write them down so that they could be sent throughout the seven churches that scattered throughout Asia Minor. That's what's happening in this history. Read. Verse 2. Who bear record of the word of what, God. What did John do? Who John bore what? Bear record. Meaning he recorded what he saw. It's going to tell you straight up. He was not sleeping. Go ahead. Who bear record of the word of God. Go ahead. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he bore record of the testimony of Jesus. Go ahead. And of all things that he saw. And all things that John saw with his eyes. So he was awake. Did y'all see that? That's crystal clear. So again, when we was reading out of Revelation, the other chapter where it says he deceived the whole world, they, he, he deceived our people so great that Christianity causes them to not even be able to see clear English. I'm going to show you how, how deceptive that witchcraft is. You will see clear English, like the slave ships, for an example. You'll see that. And, 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 the, and the dope from Christianity make you unsee it. But, but yet, you will see things that are not there. You will see Charles Manson and say, that's Jesus. Read. Verse 14. His head. No, verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that read the Bible. Not, not, not look at it. Hold it now. People in the church. They got the Bible sitting there, but they ain't reading it. Bless he that read it. Not rub your head against it. Not put it on the dashboard of your car hoping that you won't get a ticket. <laughs> huh? Not use it to prop up the nightstand because one of the legs is short. Blessed he that read the Bible. Read. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And they that hear the words of the prophecy of Jesus. Go ahead. And keep those things which are written therein. And keep those things which are what? Written therein. That's what we are reading, the writings of God that was sent to John for him to write it down. And, re and bring it so that we can read it today. Blessed is he that read it. You read that part? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. Blessed is he that read it. Now jump down to verse 13. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. John knew Jesus. John walked with Jesus. This same John walked with Christ, literally. Read that statement again. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks that John saw was representing the seven churches. In the middle of those seven churches, he saw one that looked like what? One like unto the Son of Man. The Son of Man is who? Jesus the Christ. How could John say that he looked like the Son of Man had he not seen the Son of Man looking like that before? You see that? He said, in other words, he looked like somebody I know. He looked like the man I'd walk with, like the man I talked with. Read that again. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So one that looked like Jesus Christ because that was Jesus Christ revealing himself to him, to John. 
Go ahead. And he said, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he had a long garment on, down to his feet. Go ahead. And girt about the peps with a golden girdle. Now, how in the world are they going to say that Christ didn't have a body? If John is describing... If John is describing the body that he sees that Christ is showing him, it had to match the body that he literally saw when he was walking with Jesus back then. So y'all, y'all getting this? Yes, sir. Read. His he says, and girt about his waist, that's where the paps is, meaning the area under your chest to your uh, midsection. That area is known as your paps. Go ahead. Girt about the paps with a what? Golden, with a golden girdle. With a golden girdle, read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The head meaning the hairs on the top of his head was woolly. His face wasn't woolly. You can hear you got some people trying to make it look like his, like his, like it was talking about his face and all that. At this point, it was talking about his hair. Read that again. His head. His head and his hairs were white. The hairs meaning his beard. When they have, when Christ was on the cross, they ripped his beard, the Romans. They ripped his beard, so that's the beard that it's talking about. His head, meaning his head, that the hair on top of his head, and the beard. That's what it's talking about. Was what? Were white like wool. That's the reason why when we gave you the depiction, as best as what the scriptures say, that's the reason why we, we, we draw it that way. That's the reason why we depict it that way, because it matches what the scriptures say. Not that, not that image that your children have been brainwashed with. That's a lie. That's what Christianity did. Christianity lied to us. But that ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said that his head, meaning the hairs on top of his head, and his hairs, meaning his beard, was white like wool. Woolly hair. The texture, so you can understand. Go ahead. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And if he had eyes, he had a head. He had a face. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, meaning because he drank wine. That's why it says his eyes was red. The book of Genesis 49 and 12 says his eyes shall be red with wine. That was the prophecy about Jesus. Okay, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. Why is it describing Christ's feet? Because it's already said that his body was covered up by the long robe. So what, do, what is John describing? A full physical description of Jesus. So what is, what's going on in these churches? Lies. That's what's going on in there. And it says, and his feet. And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet was like unto fine brass. Brass is brown. You don't even have to burn it. That, that, that knocked out Caesar already. That knocked out Charles Manson already. Right. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. So it didn't say that Jesus Christ's feet was burned, but the color of it symbolizes somebody that looked like they were burned in a furnace. So that's talking about a dark, dark chocolate man with woolly hair. So, show that. This is, this is more befitting of what we just read. Take a good look at that thing. Let your children get a good look at that to get that cracked pill out of their head. Okay? All praise to the Lord. Now, let's go back to Revelation. I ain't done with them yet. Revelation 12, where we was at, 12 and 9. Thank you, brothers. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. That old serpent called the devil, meaning evil, a deceiver, a deceiver, a evil deceiver. That's what devil means. Go ahead. And Satan. And he's also called Satan. Satan means adversary, meaning that he is the opposer of God. He is the opposer of the Bible. Which, we, which we, read, we read in the Bible that Christ looks like you and me, but he, the opposer said no. I'm going to tell straight lies and make everybody believe the lies. Man, that's what you call a king-sized deceiver. Bam. Send that to him. Just put the, uh, read, finish reading. We're going to show that. Which deceiveth the whole world. Did, who else did this? Did the, did the Chinese do this? Let's get, hey, hey, hey. Did, the, did the Arabs do this? Did the Africans do this? Who deceiveth the whole world? That's what the Bible is saying. Which deceiveth the whole world? That's who this devil and Satan is. The one that deceived the whole world. Ain't no red spirit came and deceived nobody. Hmm. The so-called white man deceived you with Christianity. Right. Straight up. That's what deceived you. And the people in Christianity are so totally bugged out. 
totally bugged out. Totally lost. Go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth. What, what time period is he talking about? This didn't even happen yet. Declaring the end from the beginning. This has not even happened yet. It's about to happen. Read. And his angels were cast out with him. And SPLC was cast out with him. The Canary <laughs> Mission was cast out with him. The ADL was cast out with him. Right. The three-letter uh, interrogators, the three-letter boy interrogators and persecutors, all of them going to be taken out together. Christianity, the church, all that garbage is going down with him. The, the so-called apologetics, all of them going down together. Right. His angels, his ministers. Read. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. So when Esau is cast down, what's going to happen? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength. You'll hear this. When this devil goes down, now is going to be when we get salvation. So what the hell is Christianity talking about when you bring your oppressors into the kingdom? You're not going to get the kingdom until his behind is down, till he's destroyed. To his kingdom and his power is nothing. That's when you're going to get it. So what is that telling you? That's telling you where the, it's first it's telling you where the kingdom is. The kingdom is you, Israelites, but you've been oppressed. You're not allowed to be the kingdom. That's what the Bible says. I'm going to read that too since I'm on it. Read that statement again so I can get my thoughts together, my mind going into other areas. Yes, sir. Read that statement again. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Now as our kingdom is going to come, thy the Lord's prayer, so you can understand. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? In earth. So where is the kingdom at now? Give me Matthew 11. Matthew 11. I'm just going over some basic stuff right now. Matthew 11, verse uh, 11. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 11. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. There has not risen a greater man than John the Baptist. Why? Because John the Baptist was the forerunner to the greatest man ever, meaning Jesus the Christ. Read. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding, though. He that is least in the kingdom of he, heaven. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is going to be greater than the greatest man that ever walked besides Christ. So that, what does that tell you about the kingdom of heaven? It's spectacular. Beyond words. Read. Is greater than he. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is going to be greater than John the Baptist. Come on. And from the days of John the Baptist. And, and from the days of John the Baptist. Go un, ahead. Until now. Until now, meaning when Christ was saying, when Christ was speaking this. Go the, ahead. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Who's the kingdom of heaven that's suffering? Is the kingdom, hey, wait a minute. Is the kingdom of heaven in the sky suffering any violence? No. Sir. No. So who's the kingdom of heaven? You are. That's why, the, that's why when Christ was demanded of the Pharisees, he said, when should the kingdom of God come? And Christ told him, he said, he said, um, he said how is it that you're looking for the kingdom of heaven? You don't, you're looking over there and over here. We said, you should neither go here or, or there. Somebody give me that, please. I'm messing it up. Luke, real quick. What is it? John, what is it? Luke 17. What is it? Come on. I can forget my thought. Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Read. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God shall come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation like it's going to literally come out the sky. When you read that in Revelation, it was talking about the order that's in the heavens. That's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about the literal kingdom. You're the kingdom of heaven. You're just in captivity. Read. You Israelites, you 12 tribes of Israel, you're the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Bible is about to tell you. Read. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So we're the kingdom of heaven. So now let's go back to Ma uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. 
And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. So who was suffering violence? The Israelites. That's what Revelation, the 12th chapter, was going into. The first few verses was talking about the persecution that Israel was going through when Rome came in. That was the great red dragon that entered, literally entered into our heaven, meaning into our kingdom. That's how that goes. That's why, why the preachers ain't tell, taught you that. That's basic history. What I just went over is easy. Beginner, that's Israelite 101. Read. And the violent take it by force. What did the Lord call them? And the violent people, the Romans, took the kingdom of Israel by force. Meaning put them in captivity. That's what Revelation 12, 1 to 3 was talking about. Okay, took it by force, took it by force. That's the reason why in Acts 1 and 6, they asked of Christ, they said, Art thou come at this time to restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they knew that the Israelites were supposed to be in rulership. That's what it's talking about. So now, I just said all of that. Uh, go back to Revelation 12 again. Thank you. Revelations chapter 12. I need some water. Hand me one of those bottles of water. Okay, read. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Go and ahead. I, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. So once Esau is out of his power, what's going to happen? And I heard a loud voice from where? Saying in heaven, now is come salvation. So when is that now going to take place? When the white man is destroyed, when his power is destroyed, that's how that now is going to take place. That's what we're reading here. So when we was reading in Romans, the ninth chapter, that's what it was talking about. Now has come salvation and strength to our God. Go ahead. It now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. And the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. And the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren. They ain't the white man accusing us. They call us a hate group. They said that we're thugs, niggas, spicks, wetbacks, bums, every damn thing. They call us everything but the Israelites. That's an accusation. Because they know who we are. They know we're the Jew. They know we're the real. Why do you think Haman, so-called Vocab Malone, hmm. is out there working so hard? This dude watches everything we do. He's basically the Paul Revere of white folks, of white supremacy. The niggas are coming. The niggas are coming. That's what he's saying. <laughs> you know, Paul Revere about the British. Yeah. <laughs> the Israelites are coming. The Israelites are coming. <laughs> Great fear. That's, he's the alarm for white supremacy. Right. Read. <laughs> for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. For the accuser of our people of the 12 tribes of Israel is destroyed. So when, when that happens, we're going to be in our kingdom. That's Revelation, the ninth, that's Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. Now let's go back to Romans 9. No, no, no. It's a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Which accused them before yeah, part, our yeah. God day and night. Meaning they actually sent up prayers to make sure that we stay in sin. That's what they do. They put these filthy videos out there to keep us in sin. They, 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 they do things to, to make sure that you're breaking the Lord's Sabbath days. That's what they're talking about. Everything that they do is to keep us out of the vibration of keeping God's laws. That's what that part means, which accused us day and night. They literally have seances damn near <laughs> on how to destroy us. You tell about something, you insignificant. You be, you, you be out of your, you be surprised how much these people are, are watching everything. They said, them, that's the people of the Lord. We must keep them destroyed. That's what Psalms 83 is talking about, that the name of Israel may be no more in their remembrance. There's a reason for that. Because once you repent, the nations are in trouble. They know that. Go back to uh, Isaiah. Yeah. That was it on that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Isaiah 46 and 10. Then I'm going to get on with the lesson. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. The things that are not yet done. The Lord declared that Esau was going to go to the moon. 
that Esau was going to build his nest among, on, among the stars. Did you hear this? No, the Most High said that. He said, thence will I bring thee down. The Most High got all that. Thou that dwelleth in the cliffs of the rocks. He said he would be a cunning hunter. Who hunts better than him? Nobody. This dude, this dude is a stone cold killer. <laughs> uh, read. <laughs> Saying, my counsel shall stand. God's counsel, meaning his prophecies, his declaration. That's what it's talking about. God's declaration shall stand. That's why it's saying it that way. Declaring the end from the beginning, I change not. My declaration shall stand. Where's God's declarations recorded at? In the Bible. Read. And I will do all my pleasure. And I will do what my Bible says because it's my word. Y'all hearing this? Sure. All praises to the Most High. So now, now, let's get on with the lesson. Y'all all right? Uh, so like I was saying, the arch enemy doctrine of Christianity. Can we show that thumbnail? Let's get in the spirit of this thing. That thumbnail, I just saw the, saw the one that y'all did. I, I like that last one that I saw. Put that thing up there. Let's, let's, get, let's get into the spirit of this thing. Yeah. The arch enemy doctrine of Christianity. That's what we're talking about. The doctrine of Christianity. And it is an arch enemy's doctrine. Can you dig it? Yes, sir. Now, let's get, let's go to my definition. Let's look up these words. Like I said before, uh, two weeks ago, I did a class called the Nemesis of Israel. And I wanted to point out what, what Nemesis means. So Nemesis went down in its definition and it brought up another word, which is what today's title has its title in it. Let's read that. Nemesis. Where you at? Where's Eli Eliakim? Yes, sir. Okay. Nemesis. The inescapable agent of someone's or something's downfall. You know what inescapable mean? Inescapable, meaning that you can't change him. Then is inescapable. So there's gonna, there's never going to be a time when he when this uh, nemesis is going to ever uh, not be for your downfall. That's Haman Malone. Haman vocab. Haman the enemy of the Jews, the nemesis of the Jews, the arch enemy of the Jews. Read that again. The inescapable agent of someone's or something's downfall. He is, he is an agent that is promoting our downfall. And it's an, in, it's, it's, it's an inescapable feat. It is an inescapable desire, unyielding, relentless, Staying up all night, watching everybody's videos, calling up his boys at Canary and uh, ADL, all of them. He is, the, he is the one that's connected with all of them, trying to act like he don't know nothing about them. They're all in the pot together. Y'all all right? Because yes, their whole mission is to prevent the rise of Israel, period. Don't, don't be fooled. Give me the other definition. Give me the other word. Ho, ho, ho. There was more in there, right? Zoom down. Definition two. A yes. long-standing rival. A lo meaning permanent. A permanent rival. The Bible says, give me that in Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Um, yes, give me that. It said, this definition said, a long-standing. Put that back up there again. Zoom in on that, that bottom part. We read in the definition of Nemesis. A long-standing rival. An arch enemy. Hmm. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter, that's what you want, right? But the you, one where it says a perpetual. Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 5. Listen. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred. Who is the thou? What's the, what's the, what the chapter begins off with? Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Mount Seir is Esau. Mount Seir is Edom. E-D-O-M. Esau. Vocab. They're all the same name. Okay, read that again. Son of man. Haman. Go ahead. Set thy face the against. Ag the Agagite. <laughs> the Agagite. 
Agag. Read. Set thy face against Mount Seir. Set thy face against Mount Seir. This is what God told the prophet. Go ahead. And prophesy against it. And prophesy against Edom. Now jump down. Verse 5. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred. Because you have had a long-standing, inescapable hatred. Against who? And has shed the blood of the children of Israel. So the snake is always going to bite you. Always. No matter how nice you think the snake is. Nice snake. Pretty snake. Ooh, look at his colors. He wears his hat to the side. He got his rap. He got his beats in his music. I'm checking out some of the videos that he put out. They put rap beats. I mean, it's really an insult to black intelligence, for real. His, 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 the guy is an enemy. Haman is an enemy to all Israel. He put rap music, got beats going on, making you think he's street. Mm. The damn shame. Got the little with his hat all cocked to the side. You stupid as hell. Talking about some you urban apologist. <laughs> That's a shame. That's a really a shame. You can come out of that sickness, brothers and sisters. You can come out of that mess. But you need to wake the hell up fast. Read. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel. And have shed the, the blood of the children of Israel. Go ahead. By the force of the sword. That's what Rome did. And they, these Edomites are the same as Rome. They're the same people. Their mission is the same. Keep Israel in sin and slavery. Period. Go ahead. In the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Meaning because the Most High was given, having mercy on us, and they should have left us alone. Like, they need to be leaving us alone now. Need to be leaving us alone now. But you know what? The prophecy said they're going to persecute the woman who had these commandments. So we already know. That's what Deacon Malachi was bringing out. So we understand that. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, so like I said. Uh, I'm going over now. Wait a minute. Go back to this definition. Where we at? The bottom part. The word arch enemy. That's what I needed. The long standing. I didn't finish that. Come on. A long standing rival. An arch enemy. An arch enemy. Now give me the definition of an arch enemy. Read. Arch enemy. A person who is extremely hostile. Is not the white man extremely hostile? Oh, is he extremely hostile? Yes, sir. Extremist. <laughs> extremely hostile. Ask Gad. <laughs> ask, ask Ephraim. Right. Ask Simeon. Ask Levi. Hell, ask the animals. <laughs> Ask the birds. <laughs> Ask the trees. <laughs> but we a hate group. Lord have mercy. Read that again. Arch enemy, a person who is extremely hostile. A, not a spirit, a person who is extremely hostile. Go ahead. Or opposed to someone or something. Is he opposed to God? Yes. The Lord said what? What did the most I said? The Lord said that my Sabbath day is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. He said, no, it's Sunday. The Lord said that a man is born a man with penis and the testicles. He said, no, I'm opposed to that. You make you a woman because you're a real woman trapped in a man's body. They go to the dumb man talking about something. Yeah, you might be right. Deceiver. They go to the woman. She got breasts and a vagina. And she's talking about something, she's, uh, you know what, I feel like a man. Combat boots and pants on. Sick as hell. Read that again. And, they, and, they, and they'll say this is homophobic. Huh? They'll say this is homophobic. And in both testaments, it condemns that kind of business, homosexuality. It condemns it. Can our people repent that's in it? Yes, absolutely. If you're involved in that thing, the Most High said that you can repent from it. Just like any sin. All sin can be forgiven. You can be forgiven of that thing. Just repent and don't do it no more. Simple. But while you claiming to hold on to it, then you're going to get condemned. You're going to you're gonna get the word of God. You're going to get this verse. Even though you don't want it, you're going to get it. And, when, and once, once, you, once the Most High stopped the verses from coming at you, 
Then the most I'm going to bring to death. I was sent, so you can understand, I was sent for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after I was sent for many hunters, and they will hunt them down and put them to death. Okay, so most I say, well, you don't want to listen to the word, you're going to listen to the death. That's how it goes. That's Bible. Give me Bible. Give me Bible. <laughs> That's Bible right there. Right, Jeremiah 16, 16. Give me Bible. That's Bible right there. Read. Where we at? So, uh, re finish with a person who what? A person who is extremely hostile or opposed to someone or something. Go ahead. So, who is opposed to someone or something. What what that second part say down there at the bottom? The devil. The devil. Right above that, Bishop, you see the other part? The twins were arch enemies. The twins were arch enemies. Jacob yeah. Esau. Jacob. Wow. Check that out. Wow, I didn't even put that together. You in the spirit. You are in the spirit. You cooking with gas over there, brother. You cooking with gas. What is it what is he talking about? Give me that Genesis twenty five. You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Genesis 25. Let's read the arch enemies right now in the Bible. But yet we're a hate group. Yet we're, we're not teaching the Bible. We're literally reading the Bible. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. 21. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Isaac and Rebekah, two, uh, two black people, a black man and a black woman. She, she uh, was having difficulty in conceiving, so he went and prayed. And she, the next time Jacob, uh, in, I mean, the next time Isaac entered into Rebekah, she got pregnant. Verse 22. Verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. And the children that she was blessed to have, that she was blessed to get pregnant with, was struggling within her. Go ahead. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? If this be a blessing from the Lord, why am I thus? Why is this going on in me? Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And she went to ask the Lord about these, these troubles that's going on in this. What kind of pregnancy is this? Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two nations are in your womb. Here come the arch enemies now. Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Uh, do you need a better definition of arch enemy from right, right there? Hmm. And two manner. Manner means two different spirits. Two opposites. Listen good to this here. Who is the most, because uh, what we're reading here, we're reading two uh, patriarchs in the Bible. One was a patriarch, meaning Esau, of the nation of Edom. And the other one is the patriarch, Jacob, which was the uh, father of the 12 tribes of Israel. These two boys were arch enemies to each other. So what does that mean? These two represent the two most extreme opposites. Understand what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to bring it up to the date. The two greatest enemies of the Bible is Esau and Jacob. That's why it's recorded that way. These two boys are diametrically opposed to each other. One is left, one is right. One is evil, one is good. One is black and one is white. See the correlation? Sure. They know who we are and they know who they are. That's the reason why that same perpetual hatred spirit is in them, because it comes from Esau. Christianity is guaranteed to make sure that you never get that understanding. Never. Okay, I done spent a lot of time on that thing, right? Yes, so that was it on that, right? Yes, now let's get on with the lesson. Let's get on with the lesson. Um, I'm going to move around a little bit. I'm going to move around a little bit, because I know I chunk, took up a lot of time. Okay, all right. Okay, all praises. Um, so, give me the book of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. What am I bringing out? I'm showing you that this, we're trying to get into the kingdom. We have to endure through our tribulations. Christianity is not going to work for us at all. Christianity will make you forget like, for instance, we have a holocaust that deals with us. Y'all feel me? And I want to get into those parts. That's why I said I'm going to move through this lesson kind of quick. I want to get to those parts to show you what kind of drug that was put over us to make us forget obvious atrocities. 
and make us value someone else's over our own. And if you don't do that, they say you're anti-Semitic, you're a hate group. They say all those kinds of things when in reality they're really having a total disrespect towards you. When does 6 equal 77? When does 6 million, quote, unquote, we give you that? Because there's people that dispute that. But let's say, take seven, hell, take 7 million. Just, just to get rid of the argument. Give them seven. How does that compare to 77 million North American Indians? We ain't talking about the Negroes yet. 77 million North American Indians that were slaughtered and decimated in the conquest and having their land taken from them and put churches on top of blood and bones and told you to come learn about Charles Manson. I, I, I mean Jesus. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Told you to come learn about him. Come on now. Come learn. Huh? 77 million North American Indians murdered. They got that on record. That's documented. Over 90 million of us being brought over here on the slave ships. Half of the cargo went in the bottom. Is millions of our bodies right now are at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Right now. Did y'all hear what I just said? In the middle passage. For every two that came, that for every one that made it to the Americas, another one died in the Middle Passage. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. If you got two, if you got, because for 250 years, approximately, ships sailed with slaves, so-called slaves. Give me the illustrations. I'm about to do my thing now. <laughs> give, give, me, give, me, give me them pictures, man. Let's get some realism going on here. Because show you that Christianity is, is the dope needle. Zoom in on that. I want you all to take a look. And these are the, see, you can't rush through stuff like this here. You can't rush through stuff like this here. I want to, so what you're looking at, show this, show it. Hey, look, look when y'all, just put it up there. You ain't got to get it perfect before you show it. Throw it up there. Shock value sometimes work. Y'all all right? Zoom. Uh, so what are we looking at? We're looking at a, a cross section of a cargo slave ship with us being packed on it. Pull out so they can see the whole deal. Look at that. For 200 years minimum, ships sailed bringing cargo and slaves. What was the cargo? Us, our babies. What was the goods? Us. Look at this ship. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna deal with this thing a while because this is what, this is, the inf this is the information that you really need so that you can come out of that stupor called Christianity. Why won't they talk about this? And the Bible talks about has no, has no terrible thing happened to anybody else to the level that it happened on the Israelites. Give me that. Give me that. And uh, you keep this picture up there. I mean, backwards and forwards as I'm talking. Give me Daniel 9. Give me Daniel 9. Haman don't want you to get this understanding. He went so far to try to, to, try to exhume <laughs> uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, in the NIV and try to, supersede, try to uh, supersede the real translation, King James. Okay? He wanted you to have that, that wrong understanding of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. But let's read what that Bible says. Daniel chapter 9, verse, start with 11. Yes, yes sir. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Hold it. Therefore, the curse. It didn't say a curse. It said the curse. If the Bible is using words like the curse, the in English means particular. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Once, you, once you bring the word the or the adjective the, you're describing something particular. Y'all all right? English 101. Can you dig it? The curse meaning, wait a minute. If he's saying the curse, what curse is he talking about? Meaning Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Y'all all right? 
Deuteronomy the 20, that's what it's making reference to. Let's read it. Let's read this. Where you at in Daniels? Keep, keep reading. In the oath that is written in the law of Moses. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses. Let me, I'm going to do two things. Keep that picture up there. No, no, no. I mean, don't lose it. Give me the DVD. I'm going way out of sequence, brother, so just ride with me. I want y'all to look at this here. Show that. Zoom in on this here. Do y'all know what y'all looking at? How many of y'all do not know what y'all looking at? Hands up. Hi. Come on. Stick them up. Stick them up. Stick them up. This is a robbery. So I knew there was a hate group. I'm talking about robbing people. Put your hands up. All right. Nobody. So I got a lot of people that do not know what this is. Let me tell you what this is. All right. Zoom back out so they can see the whole thing. This right here is the DVD that Bishop Nathaniel had made during the beginning of IUIC in 2003. What is this? The name of this video, the name of this disc and the information on it is about our true heritage. What did he go into in this disc? The whole chapter of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Every verse broken down crystal clear with no stones unturned. Are y'all all right? Why did Bishop do that? Because it was important for you to know your true heritage. Y'all all right? That's the reason why that was done. All praise to the Lord. The Most High had, to, ha, had and still have the right spirit on our bishop. So we give the Lord a hand for that thing. <laughs> now, let's go back to where we was at in Daniel. Thank you, brothers. Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. The Bible it says all Israel, the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, have transgressed thy laws. Hold it. What 12 tribes are we talking about? Hold that. Give me the other thing with the tribes, the thing I sent y'all earlier. We're coming back to this here. Just, just ride with me. Uh, the video. The video. Watch this. A lot of y'all probably didn't, didn't realize, didn't recognize, didn't know about this. So you saw that was dealing with uh, our true heritage, and he went through all the tribes on, on that our true heritage because there's, there's scriptures in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that deals with northern kingdom. Like it says, thine ox shall be taken away from thee. That means in their land where Ephraim and Gad were, that those oxen and those cattle were theirs. The damn white man went and took it from them and did not give it back to them. That ain't happened to no Negro. Negro ain't had no daggone cows or nothing when we came over here. We were the damn cows. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Okay, play it. What, what, what are we looking at here? Hit it. So this was during our 10th anniversary, by the way. All new books, archaeology, proofs. Detailed breakdowns. Over seven hours of footage. Discover who are the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes of Israel, the breakdown. Yes, this exists. Y'all all right? To the Lord. So that, hey, that, yes, right, give it up. So, along with the Our True Heritage, that was Bishop's idea, as well as the redoing the 12 tribes breakdown, because we did an original one back at One West. But this one here was much more detailed. Some of y'all have seen it, some of y'all have not but it's available at original royalty. Okay, so all praise to the Lord. So, uh, where am I at? What, what was Daniel, I bringing out? What Daniel was I reading? Nine. Daniel 9. Yes, sir. Let's go back to Daniels. 
Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed so thy law. So all the 12 tribes of Israel have broken God's laws, broken the commandments. Go ahead. Even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. That we may not obey the voice of God. Go ahead. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Therefore, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is poured upon the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the reason why I showed y'all those two points. Showed y'all the disc and then showed y'all the other disc where the 12 tribes were. Y'all all right? So all that information is there. And believe me, we ain't bull <coughs> jiving. I'm going to say that other word. Y'all all right? The information that we brought out in that, in that documentary is world-class leading scholarship. We don't play games up here, okay? That information is there. Check it out. And we're going to show you some today. We ain't done with you. Uh, so now, read. And the oath that is written, written in the law of Moses. And the what? And, and the, the oath, oath, the oath, the oath that the Lord has written in the books of what? In the law of Moses. In the law of Moses, letting you know it's talking about Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Listen now. Come on. The servant of God. The because, servant of God, Moses. Go ahead. Because we have sinned against him. Because the 12 tribes of Israel have sinned against the Most High. Go ahead. And he have confirmed his words. Wait, hold it, hold it. And... The Most High has confirmed his words. How is God's words confirmed? Talk to me. Huh? Is this, is this blur, just blurted out. Huh? It come to pass. Okay, what, what do you mean it came to pass? Slave ships? Y'all on it. You, huh? The curse is right. The, read that statement again. And he has what? And he have confirmed his words. You know what the you know what the confirmation of God's words are? You. <laughs> you make the Bible real. What's one of the things that I when I first came into the truth and I was reading about the craziness, I said, Well, who fits this? That's us. We fit with this Bible. We are like crazy people. We fit this. We fit this. What people can actually take on a slave master's doctrine of Christianity and say that the Lord wants you to be in that? That's what Christianity is. Now, I'm not talking about the Bible now. Because I need to, I need to, because I might have been like, why in the world is he speaking against God? He's saying Christianity, and he got a Bible up there. Christianity has nothing to do with the Bible. Right. That's what the problem is. You've been, you've, been, you've been lied to, and you've been made to associate white supremacy, which is Christianity, and you've married that in your mind with the Bible. You've read, you, you were taught certain passages, and you were made to believe that the white supremacy doctrine actually mirrored the Bible. You've been taught that. And then when you're trying to get your mind right, they say you're in a cult. But uh, the real cult is you following something that you can't even explain. You can't even explain. Where did a white Jesus come from? You can't even explain it. It ain't in the Bible, but yet you're still sitting up in there. And you got the nerve to open your mouth up and say, IUIC and the Israelites is a cult. <laughs> That's some serious witchcraft. That's some serious de delusion and some serious deception that he said that great dragon that deceived the whole world, that's, that's indicative of that scripture, that, that, that kind of deception. Make you overlook your own tragedies, which was hundreds of times worse than others. And you disregard it, won't even talk about it, and comfortable in not even speaking about it. But yet you have to take sensitivity classes like Nick Cannon. They made him, they made him. They made, they made the other brothers tell us, you got to get some damn training. Boy, that's, a, that's what you call an oppressor. Huh? That's, a, that's, a, that's white supremacy to the utmost. All right, let, let, let's get back into this thing. Where am I at? Read on. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 12. And he have confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us mm -hmm. by bringing upon us a great evil. 
For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. That's the part that I want to get right there. Read that last part again. For under the whole heaven. What's underneath the whole heaven, class? The whole planet earth. Now, uh, do we really want Bible? Give me Bible. Give me Bible. If you really want Bible, why won't this register in your brain as a permanent marker of truth? Read that statement again. For under the whole heaven have not been done. For under the whole heaven has not been done. As have been done upon Jerusalem. So the only thing you need to know, the only thing you need to think about is who did the worst atrocities happen to of all time? That's why it says up under the whole he- up under the whole heaven, meaning from the beginning of time all the way up to now and forever. There will never be a, a holocaust that is worse than ours. Than ours. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. Can y'all understand what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Under the whole heaven has not been done that has been done upon us. We don't, even, we don't even recognize how bad the situation is. We don't even, we are so gone. We, like I was saying the other, the other week, here we're talking about reparations. Could we get reparations? How could you even put a price on something that you don't even know what you lost? You don't even, in order to be restored, you have to know what you first had. You have no idea, we have no idea how much we lost. So you cannot properly repay me. God got the price in Revelation 13, 10. Thank God for that. That's the, that's the price. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's the, that's the paycheck. But they can't give us a paycheck for what, for what, how much, how much you want me to pay you? How much, uh, give, give me a price, Negro, nigga. Give me a price. I'll write a check. No, no, man, no. We don't know what we've lost. You don't know what compounding trauma came as a result of losing your father. You got to pay for that. How many, go back to these slave ships here. Let's go back to the, let, let's zoom in on this here. I want you to, I want you to, because this was a, this is what is known as a legacy of trauma. Not just trauma in one generation. This is passed down trauma that can't be paid back. Not by their means. Zoom in on that top thing. I want, I want to get it in, get those graphic details. We want to talk now. Can we get any closer than that? That's what I'm talking about. I want to see their eyes. <laughs> okay. Look at how we are squeezed up. You, people talk about sardines. I want you to understand what kind of ship this is. This is not a cruise. This is not a love boat. This is a ship that is designed to carry cargo, not human beings. There's no beds on here. For 90 damn days, we were laying on our backs in this. Laying on our backs months at a time. Stench filled. Vomit. Disease. Defecation, urinating, where we, some of us gave birth, and that's where we died. Laying on our back for over 200 years of this, ships sailed backwards and forwards. Who in the hell went through this? Who in the hell went through this here? Nobody. That's what, the, that's what Daniel meant. The stuff that happened in Hispaniola, meaning what's now called uh, Santo Domingo, and the stuff that was done over there. Hey, brothers, could, uh, I'm going to deviate for a second. Not for the moment. I'm going to stay on this for a minute. Find me the Rock and Ball papers like I brought up before. You remember that thing, uh, Eliakim? Kim? Let's find that part about them dogs and find that file. When I was in New York and they played that thing on the radio, because some of y'all probably didn't hear this. But, but while they're getting that, I want to continue to work on what we're looking at here. What y'all looking at, look at the, notice the legs. Notice the legs. 
Notice you see the you see that they were bound up. So you see each of them was bound to each other. Do y'all see that? For 90 damn days laying on our backs like this vomiting on each other. Sickness, seasick, all of that. Move to the, pull out, pull out, pull out. Now let's move to the, no, no, no. Now let's move to the front, the nose part of the boat. Look how they squeezed us in there. Can y'all see that? Look how they squeezed, look, look, look how they wanted to make sure that they accounted for every piece of space. For 90 damn days. So it's no mystery how half of us ended up overboard. Half of them just got sick. And they did not want the rest of the cargo to spoil. 200 years of this. But in church, you're taught to ignore this. In church, you're taught that you're anti-Semitic if you mention this. We're in hell, brothers. <laughs> We're in hell, sisters. Y'all see this? Yes, sir. Come on with it. Bring it. So at the top, go back to that picture again. Let's go to the very top where it says, let's read exactly what it says. Because they strategically planned this. It says, plan of lower deck with the storage of 292 slaves, 130 of these being stowed under, notice you see that, that, that they underline that, under the shelves. As shown in figure, so there, there's, this is the stowage, meaning the stowaway. Right. That's what, that's what that word is talking about, the sto how they stowed us, how they stowed away us, the plan of lower deck with the stowage of damn near 300 of us on the top and 130 of these being stowed underneath on the bottom. So if you got ships that are sailing for 200 years like this, how many millions are we talking about? Huh? Think about what I'm saying. How is it that we would go to church and the preacher ignore this? I'm being straight up. How in the world could, it, I wouldn't give a damn what the damn sermon was. I don't care about what's on the board. Well, today's lesson is the gift that keeps on giving. Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about these slave ships. Who are these people? Y'all all right? We want to talk about that. And who are these people? Why in the world would that not be at the top lesson of every church with black people in it? That's crazy. That's crazy. Go ahead, Captain. I'm going to read the, the, go back to it again. Then we're going to go to the bottom one. I just wanted to look into it in detail. Go put the picture back up, the slave ship. Right. You don't need to see me. It says, zoom into that. So they know I ain't just making it up. Yeah, yeah. It says, plan showing the storage of the 130 additional slaves round the wings or sides of the lower deck by means of platforms or shelves. Where cargo would be put at. That's why it's got shelves there. Uh-huh. Then it got a parenthesis there. What's that say? In the manner of galleries in a church. Now, we're going to keep on the slaves stowed on. In, uh, 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 in the manner of galleries in a church. That's the way we sit in the daggone church. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's just, <Wow>. hey, <laughs> the damn church is basically a damn slave, slave ship. ship. <laughs> <laughs> the church is basically a damn slave ship. I mean, literally. <laughs> Go ahead. We almost done. It says the slaves stowed on the shelves and below them move only a oh, height. Yeah, have only a height of 
two right. feet and seven inches between Good the beams and far less under the beams. Look at that. So, hey, show two another inches. picture. The, 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 the thing said it had two feet, two feet. Two feet. Two feet and seven inches for, for 90 damn days. So Bishop, show me that other that other. So there were some pictures that we showed on the. That's it right there. Yep. Go ahead. You were gonna say. I was just gonna say if you only had two feet above you, and then the stench that was going on, how could you even breathe? That's what you gotta think about things. How could you even breathe, man? That's, That's what it said, Bishop. On that middle passage, I was reading about it. It said without ventilation or significant water, about half of them got sick and died, like you said. Yes. This is reality. And you know what's worse? This just happened to be on record. Listen to what I'm saying. This just happened to be what was allowed to get to us. Just imagine the thousands of cruel acts that never made it to our eyes and ears. That's why Daniel said what it said there. God got it recorded. Not just this. God knows what happened to us. And he said he's going to bring all that stuff back to our remembrance. This is some, this is some real stuff here. Now, where am I at? I'm, I'm, I'm all out of sequence, but that's all right. Yes, yes. We was talking about, yeah, the, hold on. We're going to get right. R the Rockenbaugh papers. Read that thing in Daniel's again. Let's, let's tap into that again. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 12. What am I doing? I'm showing you that Christianity is the doctrine of an arch enemy. That's what I'm showing you. Go ahead. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. A great evil. Not just any evil, by bringing upon us a great evil. What is the Lord saying? He wants us to focus in on who is he talking about in case we didn't know. How many of us walked around in this country not knowing that Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, talked about us before we learned of it? Talk to me. All of us. All of us. We walked around not even realizing that the Bible that's literally sitting on our shelves got our history in it. Bible's always been in my house. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. And did not know that it was talking about us. They said, if you want to hide something from these slaves, put it in a book. And give them Christianity and they'll never see it. And the doctrine of Christianity is so potent and dangerous, you read this to them. And the ironclad uh, white supremacy burlap prevents them from even seeing true facts. That's, a, that's, that's some scary delusion. I pray that our brothers and sisters come out of that thing. Okay? Where are we at? For under the whole heaven. For under the whole heaven. Have not been done. Has not been done. As b have been done upon Jerusalem. So if you want to find out who is the real Jerusalem, find the people that fit the curse that Moses is talking about. That's the reason why Bishop made that DVD. That's the reason why the 12 tribes breakdown exists, because it shows you all of that. Now, now, thank you, brothers. Now, let's get my, because it was talking about all Israel, right? All Israel has transgressed. And there's more in there. How, how, there was more in that. What verse did you stop at? Uh, start, stop that verse 13. Uh, okay, that's good. Uh, put the thing up there, like here. Let's go. Let's read this here. Now, what are, we, look, what are we looking at here? War unleashed the use of war dogs during the Haitian War of Independence. Are y'all y'all all right? Levi. <laughs> y'all all right? Yes, sir. Find my parts, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, so go down a little bit. But this is a long thing here. I was just wanted to find certain parts in this thing. Yes. An enthusiastic crowd. Yes. Right Let's there. bring it out. Yes, sir. And There's the pictures. Hold, zoom in on that, that image of the dogs there on the side. That's the kind of dogs that they were using. Them dogs with them sharp teeth. Now, go ahead. Yes, sir. An enthusiastic crowd lined the streets to celebrate the dog's arrival. 
people threw flowers on their path and decorated this them. This is what they did to us in Rome. You know, when I'm, when I'm hearing this kind of language, it makes me think of the gladiators. Like when they were bringing us into the arenas and the coliseums. The, who were these gladiators? The, these were the descendants of those that fled out of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Black people. Israelites. That's why they showed you black images in uh, that movie called Gladiator. Okay? That's why they had that in there, because they couldn't lie completely. They got Russell Crowe playing as the as the as the uh, as, as Septimius. Septimius was black. Read. People threw flowers on their path and decorated them with cockades and ribbons. So they decorate these they decorate uh, what the dogs? Yes, sir. It, so they decorate the dogs. That's how they would eye their favorites during the time of the uh in, in, in the gladiators during the time of Rome. When when they were making us fight against the lions and the tigers and the and the bears and all of that. Go ahead. Rockambo decided that the dog's aggressiveness should be put to the test. Hold it. Rockambo, this was the general that succeeded and wanted to go in and turn the island of Haiti back into slavery. That's what this general wanted to do. He said, to hell with that. I'm getting ready to take it back. Go ahead, read that again. Rock and ball what? Rock and ball. ball. Rush and ball. I think that's how it's pronounced. It doesn't, it doesn't like, like, you got to read it the Oxford way. <laughs> <laughs> read that. Ro Rush and ball. Rochambeau decided that the dog's aggressiveness should be put to the test. We want so these these Edomites wanted to test the how fierce can these dogs really get? Go ahead. The dogs were put on starvation rations while a wooden arena was hastily built, probably in the garden of Les Religieuses, a former convent and ca a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. A Catholic school. There, there you go again. Read. On yeah. an appointed day, a rambunctious crowd gathered to witness what promised to be a unique and ghastly spectacle. It, hold it. it on, what, 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 where you at there? Read that statement again. On an appointed day, on the on an appointed day, a rambunctious crowd gathered to witness what promised to be a unique and ghastly spectacle. They wanted to see a sporting event. When they burned us alive, they sold tickets around this country. Come see a nigga lynch. Come see a nigga burned. That was a sporting event then you're not going to hear this in church. Go ahead. What, so what, what are we reading out of the history? On the appointed day, what? Don't move it, just read. Yes, sir. On, the the scene, on an appointed day, a rambunctious crowd gathered to witness what promised to be a unique and ghastly spectacle. Go ahead. The scene is known to us through the French sailor Jean-Baptiste Lemineur de la Fosse, mm -hmm. the French General Pamphile Lacroix, and the mixed race officer, Just Chalant, all of whom apparently witnessed it in person, and the 19th century historians, Thomas Madio and Bobrun Arduin, mm -hmm. who collect oral histories from Haitian veterans. A black prisoner was dragged into the arena and a, tied. A, a black prisoner was dragged into the arena where these dogs are being tested. Go ahead. And tied to a pole. And tied to a pole. Go ahead. According to LaCroix, Madieu, Arduin, and Arduin, he was the servant of Rochambeau's chief of staff, Pierre Boyer. Damn. He was the servant of Rochambeau's chief of staff. So you even had a job with the man. He said, but I'm so damn bloodthirsty. I ain't got nobody else to kill. Let me just take you. Go ahead. Teams of dogs next made their entry. The teams of dogs next made their entry after the black man has been brought in and tied, tied to the stump. Go ahead. Though maddened by hunger and the public's clamor, they could not understand what was expected of them and stood motionless around their foe. It took some prodding by their drivers, and according to Arduin and Madio, Boyer... Cutting wait, wait, open wait. the victim's stomach. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I need to back up some. Forgive me, brothers. Uh, where's that part again? It says about uh, they could not understand 
what was expected of them and stood motionless around their foe. Okay, go ahead. Read. It took what? It took, it some, took prodding. some prodding by their drivers go and ahead. according to Arduin and Madieu, Boyer, cutting open the victim's stomach before the dogs warmed up to the scent of blood. Then suddenly... So the dogs weren't moving. That's what I was trying to get, get the understand of. The dogs were like, you know, we ain't ready to pounce yet because we're not driven to the pitch of madness. Like they did with the gladiators. They used to do the exact same thing to the gladiators. I got that in a book where they said that's what they did to the lions. Starved them and brought, literally, I'm quoting what it says in the book from Time Life Books. It said the lion was brought, it, it said a triumphant lion uh, devours a fallen gladiator. Then it said, and the lion was driven to the pitch of madness by starvation. Go ahead. What then, suddenly, in a, in a whirl of red dust. Red dust meaning blood flying everywhere. Blood was like a mist. Go ahead. They devoured their hapless prey to the roar of the crowd. To the roar of the crowd, cheering it on. What, what, what hate group wrote this? Oh, we're, we're hate group for reading it. I get it. <laughs> Go ahead. That was and, it, right? And the blare of military music. Go ahead. Is there more on that? Yes, sir. A little bit more. Go ahead. The execution had lasted but a few minutes. Their appetite for vengeance satiated. The spectators then retired to their domicile. Oh, while wow. the dogs, having proven their ferociousness, were prepared for their first mission, a counterinsurgency operation in the nearby island of La Torte, so Tortuga. Yeah, so basically they wanted to test the fierceness of these before they leashed them on the Haitian people. We need to know just how vicious these dogs are. That's what they do. I got news for you. America deals that way. Do y'all realize that this documentary that they talk about, I'm talking about recently, more recent than this, the Panama invasion. Listen good. The Panama invasion was a testing ground for the weapons that was later used in Desert Storm, I believe a, ne a year later. They tested the, le they tested the weapons on the Panamanians. The documentary, they don't have to call us a hate group. It's in the documentary literally telling you those words. They tested the stealth bomber in Panama. They were using lasers and was melting people, cutting cars with whole families in them with lasers because they wanted to test the weapons on the Panamanian people. Ain't that something? Zebulon, so you can understand. The Israelites tested it on them. That's the reason why when they did the, the what was it, the Gulf War? Military people, talk to me. The Gulf War, what was that, Desert Storm? What was that, a year later? 92, around 92, a year later, about a year later, they showed you the war on TV. They knew the effect. You was actually seeing the smart bombs blow stuff up with cameras on them. Because they knew the effectiveness of those weapons. They already had tested it. But you didn't get that kind of preview when they went and destroyed Panama. They wouldn't even allow the cameras in there a lot of times. Go, go get that video called the Panama Deception. If you doubt what I say. Hell, you probably won't even get it now. And guess who's narrating the video? Remember that woman bewitched? Elizabeth Montgomery, white woman. She's narrating the damn thing. So get mad at her. Y'all all right? So what are we talking about here? How, how they train the dogs to be vicious upon that. Now, I'm going to do a few things. I'm sorry, brothers. I'm way out of sequence. But I'm still on the topic of Christianity. And I got a lot of information here that I definitely want to get to. Because I want to show you some information about the young lords. I'm going to also show you some uh, information about other things that's going on in, in current events. So I'm going to get with that. So um, give me Ponce, give me my book, the, um, and I didn't, 
the destruction of the Indies. Find that folder for me. I know I didn't give it to you today, but I'm just kind of rolling with it. I hope my brothers and sisters that are watching, I'm somewhat moving differently of how, because I'm rolling by what the Spirit might want me to bring out. So I want to just roll the way I'm rolling. I got my notes here, but I'm, I want to bring it out. You got my book? Let me see what's going on on the preview. Bartolome de la Casas. Me and Deacon Asaph, years ago, we were together. We went into a store. I forget what street it was on in uh, Manhattan, and we went and bought this book. And um, so we were working together at this time. Okay, that's the book there. Show that. Show the, show the cover of the book. Again, we didn't write this. Y'all all right? A short account of the destruction of the Indies. Now, if you would notice, let's see, do they show dogs in this? Because they did like that, like they starved the lions in in Rome when they brought us into Rome and made slaves out of us in the arenas and was using us uh, the, to, for, for sport in the entertainment. They always brought them dogs. That's why they love them dogs today. Let's see what we can see in the picture. Uh, sometimes you got to just look at illustrations. Let's see, are there any dogs in here? I know there's some further up, but if you look, look how they got, you see the axe where they got the, where they chop it, see, you see they got, they got the executioner roasting one on the, on the uh, fire there. You see that? These are the Spaniards burning up Simeon and Ephraim and Issachar, because they did this all over. The other book that I have, it talked about how these Spaniards, when they landed on Plymouth Rock, so to speak, they burned, crucified, tortured, raped, robbed, murdered, all the way across to California. Okay? So let's go inside the book. Let's go inside the book. Let's see what, let's see what some of the writing says. And why am I bringing all of this out again? Because this is what you, Christianity, you're supposed to be learning this in your church. Don't get mad at us. You cannot say that this is not biblical because we going this is biblical. This is biblical. It says one woman determined that the dogs should not tear her to pieces. Uh, tear her to pieces. Tied her child to her leg and hanged herself from a beam. So, like, when we was talking about the slave ships, many of us just... The moment that we were loose from being tied to each other and there was just a little bit of some quote-unquote freedom, we decided to take that opportunity to jump overboard. Okay? They showed you that in that movie called Amistad, Steven Spielberg. They showed you that. Many of our sisters with a little bit of freedom for that moment when they were quote-unquote letting them get air. She sat on the ledge, held her baby in her arms, and just kept, just went backwards and just chose death. And that, for 200 years, many of them, the, 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 there were so many bodies coming off the ship, the sharks actually changed their course and knew where to follow, they followed the scent of the blood behind the ship. That's how much blood was coming from them ships. The sharks had actually changed course and how they normally navigate through the waters. They documented stuff like this, talking about these things. Uh, let's, let's, let's read some of this stuff here. The what Spanish... We, yeah, yes, zoom sir. in. Go ahead. The Spanish commander gave orders that the leading citizens be roped together, tied to stakes, and burned alive. Do y'all see this? Burned alive. Who did this? Spaniards. Upon who? Israelites. So when I, when I learned about what happened in Panama, that was no great mystery because these people have always been this way. Y'all all right? Next page. What do we got here? All those captured, pregnant women, mothers of newborn babes, Children and old men 
were thrown into the pits and impaled alive. So they was they had put spikes in the pits that when they throw their bodies on them, they instantly be impaled upon them and died. Like a shish kebab. That's what they were doing with our bodies. But you want to talk about Christians. How come nobody's talking about this stuff here? We didn't write this. We did not put this information together. This is what they passed backwards and forwards to each other about our history, about what happened to us. But you are racist. You, you, you're showing these things and you're making the people, you're agitating my niggers. That's what they're really saying. All right, come out of this. Come out of this. What, what else we got? Read that. The, back, the black guard set the royal seal of approval on the establishment in his camp of a human abattoir. Meaning, so an executioner. So look at, zoom in on the pictures. Zoom in. Look at how they're roasting babies. Look at the torso that they split open. Right there in the middle. Not, see, he's holding the arm up. Can y'all see this? That's what it took to establish this country. That's what it took to establish Puerto Rico. That's what it, that's what it took to establish Santo Domingo. And that's what it took to, uh, to conquer Haiti. Y'all all right? Now, I'm showing y'all these things. Now, let's go to the audio tape. Thank you, brothers. Were there any more on this? That was it, right? We, let's, let's move on. Let's go to the audio tape because we were talking about Rochambeau, right? I was in New York. I tell this quite a, quite a couple of times, and I'm glad I saved this. And I was listening to the radio, listening to WLIB. That's a radio station in New York. And, uh, and this was actually before I came into the truth. This was like in the 80s. And um, there was a lot of things that I was doing in the 80s, trying to get some consciousness, if you will. Uh, it's a funny thing how I came into this truth, um, when I said came, it was a journey, you know. My first introduction to some sense came from an Ephraimite. I was working in, a, in an electronic store in Manhattan, um, and I was, I was, um, was working as a, uh, a department manager in the store. And an Ephraimite brother came in, and I was trying to sell him the stylus to the turntables, the needles and all of that. And I was going in on how he should buy elliptical versus sapphire. I forget, I forget these names, but sapphire, elliptical, they got all these different diamond shapes. And I was bragging. I was like showing my knowledge. So he stood back. Even my, he was a biker, a messenger. He stood back and said, hmm, you know quite a bit about that uh, stuff there. He said, but do you know where them diamonds came from? So well, what are you talking about? He said, don't you know that they make the people in Africa in the diamond mines, they put them in the diamond mines and make them bring up diamonds and they give them laxatives every day to make sure that they didn't swallow any. That's the kind of persecution that was going on in them diamond mines for those people. And he basically cursed me out nicely. You dumb as hell. I said, well, you know what? You woke me up. And he told me about this. I think it was a documentary or a book. Or I think it was a, um, I remember seeing something in a geographic uh, explorer magazine called Blood Diamond, something like that. And I think th that, that information deals with that thing there about how they made, uh, the Af made the people go down there and bring up these and, and scour for these diamonds. You know, so... I, was, I began to get on a quest to try to find out more about what I should know rather than what I was knowing. And then I would listen to the radio. So I'm listening to LIB. I'm watching the Donahue program. I, got, I want to show some stuff on the, I think I got, I want to show something from the Donahue program. Um, and while I was listening to the radio, because I had a habit, at this point I was like, you know what, because I'm hearing little bits of information that was like, mind-blowing to me. I had gotten to a point where I would not allow the radio to play without having a tape recording. 
running all the time. Y'all feel me? Because knowledge seemed to be so scarce. If you missed it, you missed it. So I said, maybe I might catch it if I just leave it running. Talk about an obsession, right? Tape after tape after tape, tearing up VCR or tape decks, just constantly running. And one day, the Global Black Experience, WLIB, AM radio, um, in the, uh, one of the days of the week, and, uh, and I left it recording, and I caught it. I was home at this time, and I actually was listening to a live broadcast. And what I'm about to play is that live broadcast. And there was a segment in there that deals with what we just talked about with Rochambeau. Y'all all right? Now, this is in the 80s. This is before I keep this before One West. This is before I, this is before all of that. Y'all all right? But my mind was already ready. Y'all feel me? Hit me. Caught you in midstream. Caught you in midstream. Well, we, you, want, you were talking about Toussaint and Dessalines, who was not, we don't hear very much of okay, Dessalines. Yeah, take, take some of the bass out. Take some of the bass out. We don't hear about Dessalines for the simple reason that he was, a, he was an African through and through. So, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Des, Dessalines the Ferocious, y'all heard of him, right? Dessalines, Gabriel Prosser, uh, Nat Turner, all those, all those, all those brothers, right? The fight for our freedom, will the execution of all these brothers, right? So, but Desan over, uh, uh, Toussaint Latour Overture was dealing with Haiti. Y'all all right? Desaline was dealing with Haiti. Uh, play it, play it again. Go ahead. So this was this was live now. Go ahead. Caught you in midstream. Caught you in midstream. Well, we, you, want, you were talking about Toussaint and Dessalines, who was not, we don't hear very much of Dessalines. Why is that? We don't hear about Dessalines for the simple reason that he was, a, he was an African through and through and through. He did not have any harsh measures about him because he had suffered tremendously as a slave. In fact, once... Someone asked him, why is it that you, you hate the, the whites so much? He leapt off his horse and ripped up his, ripped, up, ripped up his tunic and his shirt and everything and showed his back and his, and his front, crisscrossed with scars, blows he had, he had got. Pause, he it, said pause it, pause it, pause it. He said that somebody asked him, why do you hate whites so much? Calling him a hate group. He's, he is the victim of his people being destroyed. And they have the nerve, the audacity, or the temerity to ask him, why do you hate whites so much? Can you dig this? The gall of these people, that's what you call a devil. Go ahead. Nobody asked the white man how much, how, why do you hate the Panamanians so much? Nobody asked the white man why he hate God so much. Nobody asked the white man how he, how, how he hate Ephraim so much or Issachar or the so-called Negroes that he brought over here on the slave ships. Nobody asked him that. But if any of those people who were the victims of all levels of violence even frowns at one of them for their violence against us, they got the audacity to ask, why do you hate them so much? Wow. Go ahead. And his shirt and everything and showed his back and his, and his front crisscrossed with scars, blows he had, he had got. He said, the next time anyone asks me why I hate whites like that, I will shoot him the next time. And one thing about him is that he knew very well that he was facing the, an enemy. He knew that. He had followed in the path of one of the great Haitian leaders we don't hear about so much, is Bookman. Bookman, who is the originator, he said to himself, when Napoleon, Napoleon said that he was more afraid of 
the words of the at the slaves in Haiti that he was of, the, of swords, he says, mm -hmm. because the words he was afraid of is when Bookman and Desalines said, black this country is, and black it must become and remain. And there's only three words that they were interested in. They said it in Creole, but in English it was liberty or death. Any one of those, no other words. But we're going to make sure it will be liberty. And Desalin fought with this kind. In fact, they talk about the horrors, the things that he committed against them. Pause but it. it was a That's the part that I wanted us to get to. Now he's going to talk about the horrors of what happened in Hispaniola. Y'all all right? Hispaniola is what is now called Santo Domingo, well, uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti. They both, all of that together was called Hispaniola. Y'all all right? Levi on one side, Simeon on the other side. Go ahead. Time of extremes. The French did some things to the Africans in Haiti that are unbelievable even today. The kind of terrible things they did. In fact, some of the European historians even admit that when they, if you read, if you, any of you read the Rockambo papers, they are translated in English. Rockambo was the general who took over when their famous Napoleon's brother-in-law, General Leclerc, died, and he was being he, he had been killed. His, most of his troops. They sent a man that was even worse than Leclerc, Rockambo. Rockambo said he's going to kill. He was going to kill alive every single. Um, African general and soldier and he's going to turn the island back into slavery and he began Rockambo began by taking an African woman who was pregnant pause it pause it remember we just read out of the papers that they did it to a brother y'all all right now you're gonna hear what they did to a sister they taken a black woman a so-called Haitian black woman who was pregnant Listen now. Go ahead. Um, African general and soldier. And he's going to turn the island back into slavery. And he began, Rockambo began by taking an African woman who was pregnant, nailing her on the ground, nailing her, putting her hands to, to, to pickets on the ground, stretching her out, naked, putting, rubbing blood on her pregnant stomach and putting meat on the stomach and letting loose a cage of hungry dogs. I don't have to. You, you boil with horror and with hatred even now when you hear. This was a regular thing. He said what he was going to do and what he began to do to everybody. Children, every, there was nobody who was exempt from that. Men, women, and children. The same kind of thing that the Spanish did during the time of, um, of, 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 um, of uh, Columbus. The same thing they did in Hispaniola that we talk about the Spanish and all their horrors, how they killed off the Caribs and so on. They have a whole history of, 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 of genocide. Rockambo said to some... Pause it. What do you think happened? The damn bastards pulled the plug. I'm sitting at home listening, and my and I got it, you know, the tuna on your meter, you know, one of the old stereos. And I see that the signal was still there, but the sound was gone, which meant that they uh, the, the the satellite that connects or whatever, however that thing worked, they interrupted the signal that was on the broadcast side so that it never reached your homes. The people still in the Apollo Theater. That's where this was. This was playing live in the Apollo Theater, so the audience heard everything. But the people that were listening by radio, it got cut off. Now, somebody said, you lying. Keep playing. You're going to hear the sister that's hosting it. She's going to come back on and say that we were off the air. Would you like me to sing? I said, oh, by all means, why didn't you bring your bag? Why didn't you bring your bag? 
under lots of them in New York City and sitting. We were off you. the air for just a minute. We are back on now. Is you can hear? I'm sorry, Professor. Go ahead. Yes, we also have. Um, Did you hear that? <laughs> now I shortened because there was a long gap. Because he, by the time he came back, oh, he was talking about something totally different. The gap was over like two minutes long before she actually came back in. But I want to make sure that y'all heard that. So it's no mystery why they have a blackout on what we're talking about. Christianity is at the forefront of the blackout. And the main blackout is on your damn brain. They want to black your brain out so that you can't even accept true, easy to understand, pertinent facts concerning you. And they'll have you so psyched out that you'll look at your own brothers and talk about some a hate group. That's, 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 that's phenomenal. That is beyond dimensions in terms of stupidity. There's, stupidity has its boundaries. That level of stupidity goes off the charts. I don't even know how to measure that. To have you disrespect your own people at the expense of your own life, your babies, your kids. There's no hate teaching up here. We're giving you facts. Let me, let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. All right. Let me move things around. Give me one second. Give me, give me Matthew. Give me Matthew 10, 22. We ain't read a scripture in a while. Give me Matthew 10, 22. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22. 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And you shall be hated of everybody because we are Israel. Y'all understand that? I don't think they understand that. Where is this real hatred coming from? Because the whole objective, hold that, give me uh, Psalms 83. I'm going to show you the, dy- I'm going to show you the dynamic in thought. Because a lot of times we don't understand where this hatred comes from, them hating us. Their objective is to keep us as slaves. To keep us dominated in Christianity, which is white supremacy. That's what they want. Period. Anybody that comes to try to get you out of that is deemed a hater, is deemed a racist and a bigot and every damn thing else to get you to turn aside from what is vital to your sanity. You wonder why people are on drugs and crazy and bugged out? It's because we don't know ourselves. I'm about to jump the gun on that. I'm about to go into something by me saying that. Read, uh, where we at? What are we doing? Psalms chapter 83 and verse 1. No, read verse uh, 2. Verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. Thy nemesis, thy arch enemy, make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Wait a minute. They that hate us, the real hate group that hate us, have lifted up their head and called themselves Jews, call themselves Christians, call themselves the apostles, Call themselves Jesus Christ. Charles Manson. You call Charles, you, t- you want me to look at Charles Manson and say that's Jesus? But when we read about the real Jesus in the Bible, you say we're anti Semitic? Why? Because Jesus was a Jew. Give me Hebrews 7.14. You stay there. Give me Hebrews 7.14. Hebrews 7.14, they're going to call us anti Semitic. Just make up that trope. <laughs> Hebrews. Chapter 7 and verse 14. Come on. For it is evident that our Lord, sp- our Lord Jesus Christ, sprang out of Judah. Sprang out of Judah. We already read that Jesus Christ was a black man. We read that already. Give me Jeremiah 14 too. Now, Sean, I don't be wanting you to do all the reading unless you, because I don't want you to forget where you was. Yes, sir. I, I, I got it. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. The Jews are black unto the ground. Okay? The Jews are black unto the ground. It's saying that because that's what the color of the Jews are. Give me Song, song of Solomon 1 and 5. Give 
Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. I am black, but comely. I am Shechor, black and comely. Go ahead. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. O you daughters of Jerusalem. Go ahead. The tents of Kedar. As the tents of Kedar. Don't skip words, brother. It doesn't say the tents or it doesn't say as. As the tents of Kedar. As the tents of Kedar. 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 That word means dark skin. That word itself means dark skin. As the tents of Kedar. Go ahead. As the curtains of Solomon. As the curtains of Solomon. Curtain Solomon. I mean, the Solomon, the curtains of Solomon were black. Okay? Like Solomon. Like Kedar. Now, where were we at before all of that? Where was we at before? Psalms 83. Yes. Read Psalms it. chapter 83 and verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel. They have taken crafty counsel. Crafty counsel is Christianity. How is Christianity crafty counsel? You got. That's why I say you just can't just run past stuff. How is it that Christianity is crafty counsel? Because you are the Israelites. You are spiritually connected to God's words. So what is the best way to deceive you? By coming, by using the same word, but throwing some lies in it and steer you away from what the Bible is really saying. And our people, oh, I'm so holy in the spirit of Jesus and all of that. Because our people have a zeal for the most high, but not according to knowledge. So they take advantage of that. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. To, con to have consultations against thy who? Against thy hidden ones. Hidden, hidden, hidden. So that means the real Jews are not known. Hidden. So, again, how is, if the, we, if the real Jews are hidden, how is it that the League of Nations and the United Nations and that whole committee in 1948, have vowed to come together and 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 uh, set up the quote unquote Jews in Israel. That ain't according to prophecy. Read that verse. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. The real Jews are hidden. Go ahead. They have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation." Let us come. Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That's So it's going to tell you what it means to cut us off. Listen. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So if they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation so that we will never remember that we're the Israelites, what make you think that they would set up the Israelites in Israel? Meaning those are not the Israelites. You're the Israelites. That's, that's what we're reading. Straight up. The real Jews, they will not want us to know that we are the real Jews. So what did they give us? A substitute called Christianity. You have something, you have a form of godliness, but you will deny the real power that you're the true Jews. Right. You are the real Jews. And that's the good news. <laughs> Right. You don't know that because the enemies have conspired so that you will never come to that understanding. Read that verse again. Verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So after this, it actually lists the names of the nations that conspired together against us. Go back to... Um, uh, Matthew 10, 22. Just read that verse, and I'm going to move on and get, get my other stuff. Give me my books. Uh, before we get the books, give me Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, you just hold that. Go ahead, Nishan, read Matthew 20, 10, 22 again. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22. Now, remember in the beginning of this lesson a little bit, I showed you all the disc that the bishop had put out about our true heritage, right? And in that disc, he went through the entire chapter of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, from verse 1 all the way to 68, explaining it in detail, pictures, and everything. Then also, I showed y'all that we have a collection 
of information, seven hours of of detailed information proving that the 12 tribes of Israel are who we say they are, according to the Bible. That information is up there as well. Y'all all right? But I'm going to go a step further. Can y'all dig it? Where we at? Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men. Why are we hated of all men? Because the whole objective is for us to never come back to Israel. If, the, if we start to come back to who we are, if we bethink ourselves, that is a problem to our oppressors. Right. If you were in Christianity and you're no longer in Christian dope, I mean, uh, what do they call it? Christianity? If you're no longer in the Christ, I keep getting these, uh, forgive me. <laughs> you know, if, <laughs> if you're no longer in that crack pipe, And you venture and you rub up against an Israelite, they're on your jobs. That's what vocab said. Haman. Haman said they're on your jobs. Hey, put that video up there. Put that video up there. That was the first video that I didn't play. I don't need to play that. Then I'm going to get into this information here. You finished reading that? That was it? Or that was no, more? No, sir. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. So they all, the whole objective of Christianity is to make sure that you stay in slavery. It's that you, when you stay in slavery, you will call yourself a Gentile. What nation is the Gentiles? Which one of the Gentiles are you? I mean, just think about how bad that is. You got The, the Bible is, nations are recorded all throughout the Bible and you ask, this, you ask the Israelites, the real Israelites, who are you? Because they don't know they're the Israelites. So they say, I'm a Gentile. Well, which one of the Gentiles are you? Are you the Jebusites, Perizzites, Edomites, Ish 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 Ishmaelites? What, which, which, one, which are you? Uh, I'm just a Gentile. That's crazy. That's Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox and the ass knows who their owner is and they know where the land is at. But Israel does not know. That's that prophecy there. So we know when we ask, when we ask our brothers and sisters, they answer us according to that prophecy. The Bible says that the ox knoweth his owner and a jackass knows where his land is at. But my people Israel do not know who their owner is and they, know where their, and they don't know where their land is at. Neither do they consider. Why? Because Christianity made sure that you don't even ask the question. You don't even ask, why did, I, why did my ancestors come over here in slavery? Why did I lose half of my nation in the Atlantic Ocean? Christianity won't even allow you to be free enough to even ask the question. To ask the question. You stand up in your church and you ask that question and this is the kind of response you're going to get. I see Satan has a question. <laughs> that's, the kind of, that's the kind of response you're going to get. And then you'll sit back down. You won't even ask the question. And you'll go home with a with, with a twisted mind knowing that you should have gotten that question answered. And the worst part about it is that you have a spirit within you that know that something is wrong in society. You feel that. But because you're not being fed, because you're not being given any kind of uh, answer to those question marks, it drives you to insanity. It drives you to drugs. It drives you to alcohol. It drives you to promiscuity. I'm just going to sleep because I need to feel good. and I just need to have sex and this and that. And I ain't think about marrying this sister. I just need to get it off so I can feel good. That's what happens to us. Because we're trying to satisfy an, an emptiness that we're not even being fed. It's a terrible thing. Where are we at? What was I bringing out? Did you want to see the video or? Yeah, I'm going to bring the video out. But I was. Or Ezekiel. So I was making a point. I was making a point that Christianity is designed to keep you sleep. And Haman, who we're about to show right now, is the general <laughs> behind dope. <laughs> He's the dope pusher. And he got his Negro dope, dope, dope dealers called Urban Apologics, Negroes. They're the local crack crack dudes on the corner <laughs> trying to push dope and crack crack to you. That's what that is. Play the thing. Listen. I was out 
two Christians watching this. Um, if you know a Hebrew Israelite, which you're going to meet one. They're not just out on the corners. They're at your job more and more. They're in your family. It's going to, I think, within you five years. Do you hear the years, paranoia? Do you hear the paranoia? He said, to Christians. In other words, to my niggas. That's what he's really saying. But he's so smooth with it. So delightful. So respectable. Oxford. To Christians. Oh, you just go to sleep. Oh, no, he's talking to us. <laughs> to Christians. This man has basically injected a needle of dope inside your head. I'm a Christian. Well, what, what, what nation do you come from? Ba, 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 ba. But the Bible has nations recorded in there. Why don't you ask Haman, what nation do you come from? What would he tell you? He said, don't even worry about that. You, you, you're washed in the blood of Jesus and put you right back to sleep. But meanwhile, your spirit is still yearning. Go ahead, play. Um, it's going to rival and su surpass the nation so of So he's talking about the quote-unquote Israelite movement. Let me give you a little bit of background of what he's talking about. He's sitting with this guy, and he's talking about a book about how to understand Israel. I'm just running through what this is about. And he's basically uh, trying, to, trying to offset the, the momentum of God's truth being put out here in this earth. So he is the Haman that the Bible speaks of. His objective, hey, give me that in Esther, the rest of Esther. The rest of Esther. I know I'm moving all around, but I'm, I'm trying to keep it together. Uh, here's the reason why I call him Haman. Haman was this Edomite that was against the Israelites, against the Jews during the time of Mordecai and Esther. And he wanted to have the whole nation of Israel put to death because Mordecai wouldn't bow to his evil behind. He was so inflamed. Oh, this nigga that won't bow down to me. He, tries, he came up with a plot to try to destroy all Israel. And Queen Esther had to use her influence to make sure that the truth come out and had that damn devil hanged on the gallows that he had originally set up for us to be hanged on. Where we at? We Esther, in the Apographer, chapter 13 and verse 4. Yes, sir. Read. Decl declared unto us that Meaning in... Meaning Haman. Haman declared unto the provinces, the kings. Go ahead. That in all nations throughout the world... This is what SPLC is doing. This is what the Canary... What they call it? The Canary Mission, ADL, all of them. They all speak this language. Read that again. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world... There was scattered a certain malicious people. There is, they're calling us a malicious people. We're in captivity and they call us malicious people. What's another word for that hate group? We're the victims of, we're the victims of everybody else's violence, but yet we're the hate group because we don't want people to victimize us. Go ahead. They had laws contrary to all nations. Our laws are the, uh, are the laws of the Bible. These laws are our records. Go ahead. And continually despise the commandment, commandments of kings. We're not celebrating Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving. Those are not God's holidays. Go ahead. So as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us. So when they tell us that the uniting of our kingdoms, what are they really saying? Because they, they can, you want to, God and unite the kingdom, but leave us alone. But they're not saying that. They said, no, us uniting our kingdom, meaning you need to be in slavery. You got to get the background of what they're really saying. Because the nations, they can do their thing on their own. Just leave us alone. They don't want that. They said, no, in order for us to have our nation thriving, we need you niggas as slaves. And you're trying to come out of slavery. That's the, unhit, that's the message behind that. Read that statement again. So as the uniting of our kingdoms. So what would they be united in? What would, what would they be united so you can get the crystal clear pictures Somebody else, you stay there. You give me Psalms, what we just read. I'm going to show you what this is talking about. Psalms 83, the verse about the Confederacy. This is what it's talking about. So that the uniting of their kingdom, this is what they mean. Read that statement again, Deshaun, where you at? So as the uniting I of... I need you to stay. Don't flip. I'll let somebody else get the other part. 
Read that again. So as the uniting of our kingdoms. So what is that for the uniting of our kingdoms with an S? Yes, sir. With an S. So this is talking about different kingdoms. So they're saying that the Israelites is a problem for all of the nations so that they, in order for the nations to unite together, we are causing a problem. Why are we causing a problem? Read. Who got it for me? Psalms chapter 83, verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The nations. You see that? This is the same chapter that we was reading. Read the verses above that so we can get it all together. Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. No, 3. Give me 3. Verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. This is Haman. They have taken crafty counsel against the Israelites. Go ahead. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And have consulted against who? The thy hidden, hidden ones. ones. We are the hidden ones. They don't even want our nationality. Nick Cannon, anybody try to speak and say anything about Israel, they'll grill him. They even had this, what's the guy, a Sodomite. What's, what's that the name? Studemeyer. The, the Sodomite, Amari. I heard that he was on Clubhouse, and he, he was, you know, I didn't hear it, but they said that he was validating what we were bringing out in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Haman was online. He heard about it. He called up his boys. He called up ADL. He called up Canary Mission. He called up all the demons. <laughs> he said, we got to roast this nigga. He just went on Clubhouse, and he denounced and he got citizenship over there. He said, no, mm -mm, we got to fix this. So he had a flight to catch. <laughs> he was supposed to get on a flight. He had to, from what I heard, the guy had to leave, the brother had to leave to get on a flight to go back within an hour. So he didn't have time to stay long at all. The so-called Jews got hold to that and gave him, called the airline saying, listen, the plane ain't going no damn where. He need to get back on the radio, back on Clubhouse, and denounce everything. And he made him stay an extra two hours and denounce everything that he said prior to that. <laughs> Can you dig it? Wow. Where we at? <laughs> Psalms chapter 83, verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us cut them off from being. So the whole point is that we are not to remember that we are Israel and we are to stay hidden. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Do you know what kind of practices that it took for you to not even remember that you're the Israelites? See, sometimes you got to think about the, 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 the cruel acts that it took to, to totally take away everything about us and strip us to a carcass, basically. You know what kind of methods it took for us to be beaten so bad that we don't even want to know that we're the Israelites? The slave ships, that's why I said a lot of this stuff is not even on paper. The trauma that we went through. The different oppressions and the stuff to make us even reject what we know is vital to us. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. With these nations have consulted together with one thought, in agreement, with one thought. Go ahead. They are confederate against they thee. They are together. They are confederate as one. Go ahead. Against us. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. Read. That's Haman's people. And that's, the that's, Ish that's vocab's people. Go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. The Arabs. Of Moab. Moab, Chinese. And the Hagarines. Hagarines, African, Egyptians, like Hagar. Go ahead. Gabal. Gabal. Go ahead. And Ammon. Ammon. And Japanese. Amalek. And Amalek, so-called Jews. All of these people are together with one consent to make sure that we don't never come back to who we are as Israel. Y'all see that? So now that we understand that what their objective is for us to never come out of slavery, this is what Haman was saying over here. Read that again. Esther, chapter 13 and verse 4. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people. The Israelites, to who we never want to wake up. Go ahead. They had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandment, commandments of kings. They said that we hate everybody. We lie. We love the Bible. Go ahead. So as the uniting of our kingdoms. That's the, so that the confederation of our people. You hear that? For that the confederation of all of us. 
honorably intended by us cannot go forward. Cannot go forward because they're trying to get out of slavery. Go ahead. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in up opposition unto all men, differing in the strange manner of their laws. So how are we, op how are we in opposition? Because we're trying to keep the commandments of God. But they say, if you're keeping the commandments of God, you cannot successfully be our slaves. And all of the nations are in agreement to keep us in slavery. That's a hell of a deal, ain't it? Play this, play this clip. Thank you. So this is what Haman, Haman that's on the screen, this is what his mission is. Corners, they're your job more and more. They're in your family. It's going to, I think within five years. He's making it sound like there's some damn plague or something. He said, he said, he said they're on your jobs. <laughs> they're in your family. Look out for them. There's one of them right there. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it's going to rival and su surpass the nation of Islam as is the largest competitor in the city for Chris the Christian church. I don't, I don't think that's, I think that's almost certain. Stop. So I don't need to hear no more from this. This, this do make me want to vomit. And he probably pleads at that too. As long as I can make him sick, I'm, I'm you know. But uh, <laughs> that's what his problem is. It's, he's, he's, he's seeing that the, what he called the Israelite movement. We are the nation of Israel. We're not no damn movement. We're the 12 tribes of Israel. And that is going to crush all lies. And he knows that. He knows that. So he's trying to ring the alarm and wake up white supremacy to do vigorous attacks. This guy is a stone cold arch enemy to the nation of Israel. Make no mistake about it. Don't be wild by his colorful hats and his beats and his rap music. He's basically the Pied Piper to put black people to death. To lead you all into the damn sewer with his pipe. You remember about the Pied Piper, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what he does. He pipe you with that daggone music, his beats. Got the you know, ladies and gentlemen, got that beat, beat going on in the background and all of that. And here goes the rats. I mean, <laughs> the people in Christianity. Huh? Just go bobbing. Urban, urban rats. That's how he sees them. They're the Israelites, but he referred to them basically like the rats. Leading them right to destruction. Right to the damn drain. All right, all right. <laughs> um... Give me my books, man. No, Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. You want to start at verse 15. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 15. I was talking about the tribes. Go ahead. In verse 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write it, up, write it upon it. For Judah. Take, it, take your time. Read it again. Moreover. Thou son of man. Thou son of man, Ezekiel. This is the Lord speaking to him. And the word of the Lord came unto Ezekiel, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, do what? Take thee one stick. Take thee one stick. And write upon it. And write upon it. Go ahead. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Go ahead. Then take another stick and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. And for all the house of Israel, his companions. His companions. So what's happening here? You want to know where the 12 tribe sign come from? I don't call it a chart because it sounds like something made up. The 12 tribe sign, that's what we're reading about it right here in the Bible. So the hell with vocab, the hell, the hell with Haman, the hell with every damn body that don't accept the Bible. You can drop dead. Read that again. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick. Take you one stick. Go ahead. And write upon it for Judah. And for the children of Israel, his companions. So for Judah and the children of Israel, his companion. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's on one stick. Why? Because the nation of Israel was split into two parts. Read. Then take another stick. And take another stick. Go ahead. And write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And the house of Israel, meaning Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, and the rest of those tribes. On another stick. Listen. And join them one to another. And join these two pieces of wood together. 
Go ahead. Into one stick. Into one stick, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the sign. It's going to prove it. We ain't going to have to ask nothing. It's going to make it crystal clear. Read. And they shall become one in thy hand. And these two sticks shall become one in your hand. And these two sticks shall become one in your hand. With the names written on them. Go ahead. And when the children of thy people. And when the children, when the lost tribes of Israel. The ones that are destroyed in their minds, not knowing who the hell they are. When the what? And when the children of thy people. And when the children of your people, Ezekiel, not just any nation, your people. Go ahead. Shall speak unto thee. And when they shall come up to the camps. Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Will you show us what you mean by these names here on this board? Say unto them. Say it. This is what you are to say back to them. Thus saith the Lord God. Thus saith who? The Lord God. They tried to, they tried to discredit Ariah, which was the man that God got us this information here. This daggone hurt this this Haman trying to speak evil of the brother. But the information, the most I had the spirit on him to bring this truth out. And I'm giving the Lord a hand for that thing. Give him a hand. These damn bastards ain't never going to get me to put that information down either. Read. Saying unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph. I will take the stick of Joseph. Go ahead. Which is in the hand of Ephraim. And which is in the hand of Ephraim. Go ahead. In the tribes of Israel, his and fellows. And the tribes of Israel, his fellows. Ephraim and the Israelites that's underneath him. Go ahead. And will put them with him. Even with the stick of Judah. And I will put them with the stick of Judah. Come on. And make them one stick. And make them one stick. One sign. Go ahead. And they shall be one in my hand. And they shall be one in my hand. Go ahead. And the sticks whereon thou writest. And the stick wherein thou doest what? Writest. Writest the tribes. Writest the tribes. Go ahead. Shall be in thy hand before their eyes shall be in thy hand where before their eyes before your eyes so what the hell are they talking about in this mess they call christianity this bible is not talking about them and you better wake the hell up fast you better wake up fast give me i'm gonna show one picture it's about, about time for me to end it i just went all over my lesson but that's all right give me my books give me my books i'm just gonna show one book and I'm going to get the rest of it when I come back on this subject. Y'all all right? Sure. I hope y'all got something out of today's class, right? Sure. Give, me, give me James Adair. I'm just going to hit right in the pocket. I got a lot of information up here, but uh, look at all the stuff up here that I ain't bring out. That's okay. Uh, nope, 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 not that. It's on the Bible Book of Our Fathers because I, I played it there. I didn't bring it to this, this uh, group yet. Go to the Bible Book of Our Fathers. The, the information I brought out last week I had a whole lot of information I wanted to bring up, but I'm gonna, I, we'll get to it. Because like I said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to rush this. Y'all all right? Uh, find James Adair. Come on, brothers. I played it last week. Come on, come on. It should be coming up right there. James Adair, hit that. Hold it. No, 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 no. Just go to the beginning. Next one. Come on. Open that. Show that to the people. What are we looking at? So here's the, why why am I bringing this out? Because the devil wanted to say that we made it up. Wanted to say that Aria and all of us that, 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 that subscribe to what we just read in Ezekiel, we made it up. Y'all all all right? I want y'all to hear me well. We didn't make up a damn thing. And the, and the, here's the point. And I can tell you because I was there. Aria, uh, Bishop, we were there together. Aria had, had found the tribes in the Bible first. Then the history books came to back it up. Talking about the spirit was on that man. He found out who the tribes was in the Bible first. Then came the books to back it up. Whose books? The so-called white man's books. 
That's what we're about to read. Watch this. Show it on the screen. Show the beginning. Zoom in. I'm going to be quick. Like him, I need you to run through it real quick. Yes, sir. I'm going to give it to the bishop after this. The history of the American Indians. Go ahead. Partially, those nations. Particularly. Particularly. Uh, particularly, those nations adjoining to the Mississippi, east and west, Florida, Georgia, South and North Carolina, and Virginia. Read. Containing an account of their origin, language, manners, religious and civil customs, laws, form of government, punishments, conduct in war and domestic life. This is what was observed by the in this was was observed of the Indians by this man James Adair. That's what we're reading. When was this book written? In the 30s, 1930. Go ahead. Their habits, diet, agriculture, man manufactures, dise diseases and method of cure, and other particulars sufficient to render it a complete Indian system. This book, this, these records render it a complete Indian system. We didn't write this. Ariel didn't write this. None of us wrote this. Y'all understand that, right? Read. Observations on former, uh, excuse me, with observations on former historians, the conduct... Former historians, I got other books that's confirming this. Go ahead. The conduct of our colony governors, superintendents, missionaries, and etc. Right. Also, an appendix containing a description of the Fl Floridas and the Mississippi lands. Jump down to where it says, uh, with the new map, because there's a map in this book. I got the book. Yes, with sir. With a new I map. say that too loud. Damn boys might show up. Yes, sir. Give with me the damn books. I'll kill you. <laughs> Go ahead. With a new map of the country referred to in the history by James Adair, Esquire. He ain't no bum. By James Adair, Esquire. So this ain't, this ain't, this ain't some bum guy. Respect it. Go ahead. What does it say? What does it say under that? A traitor with the Indians and resident in their country for 40 years. So James Adair was with the Indians, the so-called Indians, for 40 years, and he observed things. Read on. No, turn the page. For 40 years. Give me the next page. That's why I want to read this. Go ahead. This is some of the stuff that he observed. Highlighted part. Observations nope. yes, on right. the origin and descent of the Indians. No, look, read the top of it. Yes, sir. Uh, contents. contents of this book of the observations that he made. Contents. A history of the North Americans, their customs, etc. Their customs, etc. Go ahead. Observations. Observations. On their color. On their color, what they look like. They are not, they're not no red people. The damn lie. Where did, where did Columbus think he was, so, supposedly? He thought it was an Indian, right? India. Are the people in India red? Okay. So there you go. <laughs> Read. Observations on their color, shape, temper, and dress. Observations on the origin and descent of the Indians. He this is what uh, this is what Adair found. He said, or he says, observations on the origin and descent of the Indians. Go ahead. Observations, observations, and arguments, and arguments meaning backwards and forwards and debate. Go ahead. In proof, in what? In proof, in what? In proof, in proof. Go ahead. Of the American Indians being descended from the Jews. So James Adair is anti-Semitic. <laughs> Look at all of this: the worship of Jehovah. Uh, the, uh, the daily sacrifice, laws of uncleanness, abstinence from unclean things. These are supposed to be savages. Cities of refuge. Wait a minute. Do y'all see this? The manner of curing the sick, burial of the dead, the, they're raising seed to a deceased brother. This is all in the Bible. What in the world are the quote-unquote Indians, savages, doing, are being observed doing this if they're not the Israelites? So Ariel was not out of his mind. The spirit of the Lord was working on that man to come up with what he, what he brought out. And the history books back it up. So all praise to the Lord for that thing. One more book. One more quickly. No, it's, it's time. King's Lord, King Lordsboro. Yeah, just a little bit. Then I'm going to close it up. Give me the, uh, come out of this. This ain't going to be nowhere near as long as before. 
Uh, same folder. Come on, brothers. Y'all were just looking at it just a moment ago. You ain't got to go nowhere else. It was in that same night that I brought that out. Back out of this, right there. Mysteries of the past. Oh, you know what? I, I sent a better picture to that. Hold on a second. Say something real quick. Where my phone at? So what y'all think? As y'all see, again, we ain't crazy, are we? Y'all see time after time that, again, the Most High is revealing not only the truth, but the proof to back up the truth. You understand that? And they know that. When he said Haman, so-called was vocab alone. Yeah, he is Haman and all his ancestors. We are the children of Israel. You cannot change that. You can't take that. I can't reach inside of you. I can, I can lay you on a table right now, and I can't take that out of you. Am I right? So you can't allow them to take it out, out of you, away from you either. The most I meant for, you to, for it to be in your spirit. The most I meant for you to be sitting where you're sitting at right now, at this very important time. It's time to wake up, Jacob. Am I right? Because yeah, exactly. you are the children of Israel. Right. Exactly. Go ahead. Show that clip. Show that. It's a one page and then we're out of here. Show the, show the beginning of the book again. It was uh, Mysteries from the Past. Go back. What are we doing? We're proving that the scholars also confirm what we were talking about. Not that one. The other book, Mysteries from the Past. Mysteries from the Past. This is another book. Come on, brothers. The same folder. You were showing it earlier. Bible book of our fathers. It's in there. Could we see it on the screen? Thank you. Show it. Mysteries of the Past by Lionel Casson, Robert Claiborne, Brian Fagan, Walter Karp. Okay, now let's go inside the book. Now, give me the picture that I, because I sent you a clearer picture. This is the one that I did last week, but it wasn't clear. Give the one that I sent today. Is this the one you sent today? Okay, read. In read 1641, that. Antonio de Montezinos, a Portuguese Jew, made a voyage a to South... A so-called white man calling himself a Jew. Go ahead. Made a voyage to South America and reported that while journeying near Quito in Ecuador, he met up with a native who, to his astonishment, was Jewish. Meaning the real Jew. He met up with a real Jew to the native that was there. Go ahead. What is more, the man took him on an arduous week-long trip through the, the hinterland to a remote spot where an entire community of Jews was living. Now, notice this information that we're reading here. Remember, we was reading in the James Day. We was reading in one of the records, and it said that there were other. It was James Day. He said there were other scholars that confirmed this. This is another one. And another one is Lost Tribes in the Promised Lands because Lost and Tribes in the Promised Land is mirroring this very incident. Go ahead. Play on. I mean, read on. Uh, Antonio actually heard them recite in Hebrew the traditional prayer, Hear, O Israel. Returning to Europe, he reported to find... So he heard, he heard these, these Israelites say, Hear, O Israel. Then he went back to Europe. Go ahead. Retur he, go ahead. Yes, he sir. reported... Returning to Europe, he reported to find to he reported his find to Manasseh ben Israel, the most eminent Jewish scholar of the day, and an author who had a had wide readership among non Jews. No less an artist than Rembrandt was illustrator for one of his books. Manasseh published the spectacular news in a slim volume called The Hope of Israel, which written originally in Spanish, was swiftly translated into Latin, Hebrew, and English. Go ahead. The English version went into three editions within two years. Go ahead. The notion that the lost tribes of Israel had crossed the ocean to America had struck others as much as a century earlier. Meaning second Esdras. Go ahead. But Manasseh was one who brought it to public attention. He brought the information all the way out. Go ahead. Who launched it on its extended career. So he, this guy, he said, I got to bring this information all the way out. Now read what's in the, in the highlight, in the green. Come on. 
Before long, Antonio's tale of Israelites who had wandered to America was escalated into a theory which put them among the founders of New World Civilization. Because the Gadites were the first ones here. The 12 tribes of Israel were the first ones here. They were the founders. Well, nobody else here but the Israelites. They were the, that's the reason why I said that in the Apocrypha, where no man had dwelt before. Read. A theory that reached its heyday One in the... damn theory. It was the real thing. Come on. In the 19th century. Britain's Lord Kingsborough, for example... Here's another guy that ain't no bum. Lord Kingsborough, go ahead. For example, went through the family fortune and landed in debtor's prison. He no went broke. This guy went broke. He went through the family's fortune and went broke doing what? No less than three times. He, three times he went broke doing something. Watch this. Go ahead. He died there the last time. He died on the last one. In order to publish Deluxe. He went and went broke in order to do what? To publish Deluxe superbly illustrated superbly volumes. Superbly illustrated information about who? Volumes proving that the Mexican. Volumes, volumes, volumes. Doing what? Proving that the Mexican Indians were descendants of the lost tribes. Shalom. <laughs> Stay tuned for Bishop Nathaniel. Most high in Christ bless you all. Happy Sabbath. Never give up. 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 And so we say shalom. Okay, stay in the spirit. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children.